Hey you guys, this is Jessica Noam here at Rax Tracks recording in Chicago with Reverb and we are here for another episode of What's That Sound. Today we are recreating the sounds you hear on D'Angelo's album Voodoo. It's from Questlove, it is coveted to this day, it's chased after by everyone. Let's see how close we can get. So for our drums today, we used a Ludwig Vista light kick drum and then Zildjian K-Dark hi-hats that I played with a pencil to get a shorter and softer sound. And then we used a Yamaha piccolo snare that I just played the rim of. I was so excited to make this sound. It's one of my favorite drum sounds ever. Um, and it's sampled constantly for like tons of hip hop stuff and like Neptunes stuff. Everyone is using samples that sound like they're coming from, from this record. Um, so when we set out to make it, we had to figure out what exactly was making it sound the way that it sounds. The first thing that we noticed was the drums are mono, right? So we knew that we didn't want to use anything that would cause any imaging. We knew that the drums were super tight and we knew that they had a lot of saturation going on with them, especially the snare drum. So we knew we'd need to saturate it. Past that, we were just kind of guessing and experimenting. So we tried a bunch of different drums. We ended up with the kick drum that we chose just to make it as soft as possible, right? This kick drum does not have a lot of attack. The snare drum that we chose, we were just looking at the rim. So we tr experimented with a bunch of different placements of where the stick could go and a bunch of different tunings. And we ended up settling on a piccolo snare because it, it kind of added the pitch that we knew that we would need for this drum sound. The hi-hat sound, we ended up using a pencil because the hi-hats would end up way too heavy with any stick. These hi-hats kind of feel like, they almost feel like the way that like trap hi-hats feel in, in uh, trap music right now, right? It's really, really kind of short, small, soft attack, and the weight of the stick would bring way too much weight to that sound. So the pencil would keep it really, really small and just in its right place in this drum sound. So the miking that we chose for this, we actually were able to find some information on like message boards about what they were using. On the kick drum, we used a D12 on the inside kick and a IFET, which is a FET 47 clone on the outside. When I say inside and outside, they, they were pretty much side by side. Just one of them had a little bit more high end and one of them was like a little fluffier of a, of a sound. On the snare drum, we did a 57 on top and we did a AKG 451 on the bottom. The 57 would give us a really ag aggressive mid-range knock to it. And the bottom mic would give us all that sizzle that we needed on the top. And we also used a lot of the body from it, a lot of the, the low end from the bottom mic to, to kind of round out the sound. On the overhead, we used a Neumann 47 just really low and, and close to the sound so that it didn't pick up so much of the room. So to start, let's pull up our overhead. We kept it generally pretty natural, right? There's not a lot of compression on this overhead because we didn't want to bring up the hi-hat too much. We wanted the, the hi-hat and the snare drum balance to stay pretty much the same, right? When you over compress something, it starts to become reactive where based on where the snare drum is hitting and where the kick drum is hitting, the hi-hat volume is, is, is changing throughout the pattern. We didn't really want any of that on this particular cut from, from Voodoo. So we kept this almost entirely uncompressed. We put a tiny bit of compression, but for the most part, the dynamics are natural. Uh, the thing that we did do con to control dynamics a little bit is we added a little bit of saturation. And I did that with a plugin called NLS, which is like a, a console emulator, right? It's, it's a, effectively the same as like turning up the, the channel on an SSL console or something like that. Uh, on this particular one, I'm using the EMI uh, setting, which adds a lot of low end and high end uh, to the sound. 
So that's our, our overhead. I also filtered out quite a bit of the low end because I didn't want any of the low end of this drum sound to come from the overhead. I wanted it all to come from the direct kick drum mics. Kick in. Really good kick drum sound on its own, right? The, the most important thing about this kick drum sound is that it is not terribly long, right? Because it has to, it, there's a lot of really sustained bass notes in this, right? The bass has this really pillowy, fluffy sound that like kind of um, has some, some length to the notes. Even though they're muted, they have some length to them. And the kick drum is meant to just give like a punctuation to those notes, right? So it didn't need to be super subwoofer heavy. It didn't need to be super um, long, super intense, but it did need to be really, really dark because that's like a really specific characteristic about these, these drums is that there is not a huge high end attack to the kick drum. It just feels like you're like punching a pillow or something. So this is our D12. We are filtering off the high end. So there's, there's a bit of control there. And here's our FET 47. A little bit thicker, a little bit pillowier, but also just two sides of the same coin. Uh, if we only, if we had to, we probably could have just used one of these mics, right? They both sound like complete drum sounds. It's not the kind of thing where like, sometimes if you're recording a, a rock drum sound, the kick out mic will be integral and the kick in mic will be integral and you have to use both of them. These both sound great, but together, So the last thing that I did on this kick drum sound to kind of take it over the top was I added a multi-band expander to the sound, right? Now this is only using two bands. One of the bands was from about 50 hertz to 100 hertz, and one of the bands was from about 100 hertz to like 175 hertz. Um, I took those two bands, I brought them down in volume, right? So I lowered the gain on those two frequency ranges, and then I had them react to the kick drum every time it hit. So every time the kick drum hit, you would get this momentary boost in 150 hertz roughly, and in like 75 hertz roughly, right? Uh, the reason that I did it this way is because I wanted to tack on this kick drum, right? I wanted it to, to, to get punchy, but I did not want to add any high end to this kick drum. So by punching out the low end, it kind of adds the feeling of attack without adding any of the high end stuff that would not be like genre appropriate. All right, let's take a look at the snares. The snares, we did kind of a lot to them. So let's listen first to the in and out with nothing on them and then we'll add in effects one at a time. Here's our snare top. SM57, super mid-rangey. We did a tiny bit of EQ, a little bit of brightening on the way in with our uh, Neve 1073. And we did a little bit of compression on the way in with an 1176. But past that, it's a natural sound. Uh, here is our snare bottom. Very isolated sound, right? Because it's a rim click, it's kind of cooler than most snare bottoms. Usually snare bottoms are not a very viable sound on their own. They like need the snare to fit. This actually sounds pretty cool. Together, they help each other a lot. Uh, let's add a little bit of EQ to them to just get them to be a little bit more mid-rangey and knock a little bit more. So now we're starting to stylize a little bit, right? It's getting a little bit more uh, mid-range heavy in a way that no snare drum acoustically would ever sound this mid-range heavy. Uh, but for the record, it's gonna feel really cool. Let's add a little bit of compression to this. So this is compression. I'm also doing a little bit of limiting because this sound is not super, super transient. And so I wanted to cut off a lot of the, uh, a lot of the 
initial attack of it, right? I just wanted this kind of sustained flat sound. Um, so limiting is gonna help with that. Let's go for some saturation and see if we can get some length out of this. Okay, a little bit of distortion is at, is pulling out a little bit of length here. It's adding a little bit of, uh, of tone to this sound, but there's quite a bit of hi-hat in this snare already. So let's add noise gates so that we just get just the rim through this sound. It's close, it's getting really close. Now there's one last thing that we had to do to this. I did not hear this in the record, right? I, I did not notice this, but once we started recording it, I started feeling like it almost sounds like there is a flam going on in the record. Like it sounds like it could be a, like hitting two sticks together or something like that. The way that I decided to achieve it was to add a really short delay to the snare top only. So here's without it. And now here's with the delay. It kind of makes it sound like an 808 clap in a weird way. It makes it feel super, super stylized. And that's like kind of the point of this sound, right? Is it's live drums, but it's meant to kind of feel like a, you know, lo-fi J Dilla, like hip hop beat. Now we, we threw up a room mic when we, when we set up this, this sound. We threw it up not because we heard a room mic, but because we had read in like message boards that they were using a room mic. Now, when I say room mic, I'm talking about a microphone that's like just in front of the kick drum, right? It's not a room mic. It's it's just happens to be in front of the kit, um, but it's it's not really any further away than the overhead is. Let's say um, it would pick up a lot of kick drum because it's in front of the kick drum, right? But it's not a kick drum mic because it's picking up the whole kit. And on this particular mic, we used a ribbon, which meant that it's gonna be really dark. We used a Coles 4038, very dark microphone. And it's bi-directional, which means it's probably gonna pick up a little bit more of the room. Here's without it. Here's with it. So the last piece of the puzzle is a tiny bit of reverb. You can barely make it out in the record, but there is a little bit of reverb there. We triggered a, a bit of reverb just off of the snare drum and we used a Valhalla Vintage Verb plugin set to like two seconds decay. Uh, and that was set to the big room setting. Let's take a listen to the whole thing and see how it sounds. That's the drum sound for D'Angelo's Voodoo. Let us know in the comments what other drum sounds you'd like to hear us break down, and we'll see you next time.